welcome back to my channel. First off, I would just like to say that I am so sorry I have missed, I don't know, like two weeks now. I think it's been a video. It's just been a little bit crazy. I just got a new job, which was part of my last bi-monthly goal, so that was good. But it's been a bit of an adjustment trying to figure out my schedule. So, it's on my goals list for these next two months is to have eight YouTube videos published. I'm going to be sending you quite a few videos over the next couple days. Um, probably at least two consecutive ones and then one for the last week of September. So, that being said, today I'm going to do kind of a bookshelf tour video slash why you should read books if you're a writer. <laughs> Originally I was going to split this up into two separate video topics, but like I don't have a huge bookcase and I don't have a lot to say about this topic, so I decided to just put them together. There are quite a few reasons why you should read books if you are a writer. The first being, well, inspiration, which I know is kind of this elusive magical force that doesn't really come when you want it to, but I find that it comes a lot more often when I'm reading other people's books. And I think part of it has to do with the fact that you're just utilizing the creative part of your brain. So I am a strong believer of when you put yourself in a creative environment, it helps you in turn become more creative. And that's something that definitely happens when you're reading at least fiction books. I guess nonfiction books are creative too, but it's just, it's a little different than immersing your entire brain into a different world that doesn't actually exist. If you want to become more creative as a writer, I definitely suggest reading more because it just expands what you have to work with when you write your own novels. We write from what we know, and the more you can know, the more you can produce. So it's helpful, it just it gives you an arsenal of things to draw on. The second thing is that when you read a lot of books, and this is something that's happened to me as well as to several other people I know is that it influences the voice that you have. Now I know as writers we each have our own very distinct sorts of voices, but before you've become published and when you're just starting out writing books, what you read really influences how you write. You should be looking up authors and researching what kind of styles you like and reading authors that emulate that style so you can gain inspiration from them. Those are my two main points about why reading is important for writers. On to the bookshelf tour! So I have three different main bookshelves in my room and this is the first one here. It's right next to my shoes so don't mind those. Um, but this is the top. I have a picture that I find really inspirational. It says dream, imagine, wish, create and then the bottom says inspire. And that's kind of what I want to do with my whole life. Um, it's my mantra in a sense, even though I don't repeat it to myself, but it's my heart song. And then up here I have my collection of little plushies. This is Shikamaru that I got in like high school a long time ago. This is the first um, gift that my boyfriend got me. This is a little tiny hamster thing I got for Christmas. This is a turtle that... I honestly don't remember where I got the turtle. <laughs> this is a little, um, it's a clip-on hat with fox ears that I got in South Korea when I was there last year from the theme park Everland and it's kind of like this Halloween themed theme park and it's really awesome. And then I have my little giraffe buddy right here. This is a little cat that my sister sent me while I was in South Korea. Um, this like little change collector for the Pregnancy Resource Center um, in my area. And those are two little figurines that my roommate got me a long time ago. A little peacock that says, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. My very dear friend gave this to me and I feel so bad because it fell one time and the edge cracked. But um, yeah, she's one of my best friends and she knows I love peacocks. So this is... Mr. Blue, the travel panda, and I take him whenever I travel anywhere. <laughs> like, that's a long way, because he's the travel panda. And then this is my little box that I use to keep hair ties, and there's some extra, like, currencies from foreign countries in there. Not big currencies, so don't find my house and rob it, because it's not worth it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And then these are all of my bookshelves that I have here. 
So this top shelf is kind of um, what I have deemed my world literature shelf. It starts and end with, ends with Shakespeare. I have, or wait, no, this is actually just literature book. So it starts with this literature book that just is a collection of poems mostly and things like that. And then I go into like my Greek mythology. I have the Odyssey, Arcadia, and then what's this guy? That's Catherine called Birdie. That's not Greek mythology. But I kind of have like my couple Greek mythology books. I have more in the middle actually. I might need to rearrange this shelf soon. So yeah, um, Crime and Punishment. So kind of like Russia. Going into my Asia books, I've got The Dancing Girl of Izu, Tale of Genji, Siddhartha, um, one other one I can't read, and then um, White Tiger. So, yeah, I just kind of span the continents, if you will. Most of these I've got in school. Um, these I got when I was in second grade. My teachers, <laughs> one of my teachers, we had two teachers in second grade. Her dad was an author who did these little books and she did all packages at the end of the year. And those are just books that I've, well, Treasure the Island and I'm school. But these are the ones that, just ones that I've collected from the library because they were free. Alright, going on to the next shelf. This is like my young adult fantasy sort of shelf slash anime, I guess. Starts off with the Peregrine. But it's a historic fiction because we're at the night. Um, and Fog. And that was it's set in World War II. Really, really good. I think I read that thing in a day. I really could not put it down. Um, Percy Jackson, I do have Twilight. It's not my favorite series, but I need to know what everyone was talking about, so I read all the books. And then I've got some Christian fiction here. Um, some stuff like Dean Henderson and Frank Peretti. Testament, New Testament books from school that I really didn't read, but some of them give like a lot of really cool historical background from those time periods, and so I wanted to keep them in case I ever wanted to write some sort of historical fiction and like learn more about the setting. My second bookshelf type thing is this lamp slash bookshelf, and it's right next to my bed. This is where I've got kind of my J.R. Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, um, shelf. <laughs> There's also George MacDonald, and because he greatly influenced both of those authors. Um, but yeah, I, this that, that's just all J.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, besides the one George MacDonald book. Um, it's The Complete Fairy Tales, which I highly recommend reading as well, because it's magical and beautiful. Awesome. And then this down here 
is my Harry Potter shelf. I, <laughs> I don't have the first book and I don't have the last book, although I've read both of those. I just had to rent the first book from the library and then I think I rented the last book from the library too, actually. And then I have Cursed Child, um, The Fantastic Beast, uh, Screenplay, and then The Tales of Beetle the Bard, which is such a cute book. It's really adorable. And then there's a little hidden shelf on my desk right there that's got quite a few Ted Decker books. It's double layered, so I have these ones in the front and then I have another row right behind it. Um, that one book right up there is Neil Gaiman Neverwhere. Yeah, so that's not really a bookshelf, but it's a shelf that's being used for books. And then my last bookshelf is right over here <laughs> next to my trash can. So up here I have my Sarah J. Mass and the Land Witch book. Um, I need to get the rest of those because I don't have it all straight out. But oh yeah, and then I have Maze Runner on there too which I actually think I borrowed from my friend when we were in high school, and I recently just found it at the top of my closet, so um, I might need to give that back to her. Uh, the second shelf here is kind of all my motivational, inspirational how-to sorts of books. So I have Five Figure Author Challenge, the um, Write Your Novel in a Month, Rich Bitch, which you've heard me talk about before because it's amazing, The Conquer Kit, um, the imaginary world of, that's kind of just like a fun, creative, spurt sort of book. But it's like, I don't know if you've seen the Wreck This Journal book, but it's like that. We have the practice of creative writing, developing story ideas. Again, some of these I got in college, and then some of these I bought afterwards to help inspire myself. <laughs> and then down here, I've got my cookbooks. Not very many, but there's some. So that's the basic rundown of my bookshelf tours. I hope you enjoyed them. If you recognize any of the books on there and you like them, let me know. And if you have any book recommendations that, for what I should read next, definitely let me know that as well. Because I love reading new books. Mostly fantasy and sci-fi, but you know, I'm open to other options too. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more book-related sorts of videos, go ahead and click the like button. And if you would like to receive weekly updates on how to start, write, and publish your novel, as well as some other fun writerly things, go ahead and subscribe. I typically post videos every Tuesday, but, you know, I'm not quite holding myself that to that. It's a goal. If you have any questions, you can write them in the comment section down below or find me on one of my social media links listed in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time, bye!